Exmoor overlooks the Bristol Channel spanning Somerset and Devon. It is compact, mainly of high moorland and smaller than nearby Dartmoor. It boasts several unique features that include high cliffs of over 1,000 feet, deep river valleys and several picture postcard villages and harbours. It was designated a national park in 1954. I have organised several photographic holidays for HF holidays from their hotel at Selworthy, and all of these images were taken during that time. Selworthy Village is a short distance from the hotel. A show village, it is owned by the National Trust, and the only shops are one serving refreshments and the other an information centre. It is unashamedly picture postcard or chocolate box, but I have a soft centre for this type of architecture. The houses were retirement homes for the Honeycott Estate workforce, built in 1810 by the Ackland family. Honeycott House, now the HF Hotel, was the holiday home. Don't miss the church, which is 15th century. A favourite walk starts at Allerford and goes along the lower slopes of Selworthy Beacon, marked Bossington Hill on Ordnance Survey maps. This high-level path has splendid panoramas of Porlock Bay. Exmoor is also known as Exmoor Forest, but there are no trees. The name harks back to a hunting forest for Saxon kings, with Porlock as its base. The path continues to Hurlstone Point, overlooking the Bristol Channel, where an old Coast Guard's lookout still keeps watch for smugglers. Porlock Bay was a favourite haunt. On a clear day, South Wales can be seen. The A39 is the main road through Exmoor, which continues into Cornwall to become the Atlantic Highway. It is scenic, but not for anyone in a hurry. It hasn't been improved and has many bends. Porlock Hill, with one in four gradients on S-bends, is the first obstacle before it continues at high level across the moor before finally descending Countersbury Hill into Lynmouth. At County Gate, where Somerset meets Devon, where there used to be a gate, is a public viewpoint. At one's feet is the deep river valley of the East Lynn, winding its way into Lynmouth, whilst behind is the Bristol Channel. This is indeed a unique landscape. At one's feet is Orr and Malmsmead, the setting for Lorna Doon by R. D. Blackmore. The river is Battery Water, a tributary of the East Lynn River, which runs through the centre of Malmsmead and the county border. The Packhorse Bridge spanning the counties is 17th century. From here, a path takes the walker into the heart of Lorna Doon country. I often discover churches in amazing places, and St. John's Countersbury is one. Perched high up at over 800 feet, with only a pub and very few houses for company, you wonder where the congregation came from. Go through the churchyard for a breathtaking view. The panorama features the twin towns of Lynmouth and Linton, with the North Devon coast stretching beyond Valley of Rocks towards Coombe Martin and Ilfracombe. 
Located under steep hills at the mouth of the East Lynn River, Lynmouth does not get any direct sunlight in winter. In summer it is geared up for tourists, but its cousin Linton, hundreds of feet above, is where the shops are located. Connected by a funicular railway, it was built in 1890 and powered by water, the carriages counterbalanced by water tanks. From Linton is North Walk, an exposed but safe footpath overlooking the sea to Valley of Rocks. This landscape is a curiosity. Much of the Exmoor coastline is dramatic and includes mainland Britain's highest sea cliff, but the rocks here are unique and individual. Enclosed in its own valley and running parallel to the sea, those on the seaward side are of particular photographic interest, culminating in Castle Rocks, the perfect focal point. A path crosses the ridge, but with care and the correct footwear, it is possible to stray from the path for that special viewpoint. Linton had a railway. It was narrow gauge, which came up from Barnstable. It has long gone, closed in 1935, but plans are well in hand to restore the line from Woody Bay Station. I believe that on my visit, the engine Blanche was on loan from the Festiniog Railway. The line passes Paracum. The church dedicated to St. Petroc is redundant, but accessible. The interior is simple, save for a huge screen between the chancel and nave, where engraved to remind its congregation are the Lord's Prayer and Creed. The box pews are 15th century and appear to be largely untouched, a problem with so many other churches where they have been ripped out and replaced with less attractive Victorian pews. A little further along the coast, the River Hedden makes its way towards the Bristol Channel. This can be followed from Hunter's Inn, down a steep-sided valley carved by the river, a wonder in itself. Steep-sided cliffs rise hundreds of feet on each side to Hedden's mouth, where the river finally meets the sea. It is perhaps difficult to imagine that Coombe Martin supported a community mining for silver and lead until the 19th century. Today it is a popular holiday destination on the western fringe of the Exmoor National Park, sheltered from Atlantic storms by a U-shaped bay. Returning to base, we stop again at Lynmouth and take a tree-lined path by the East Lynn River to Watersmeet and particularly attractive in spring and autumn. Watersmeet refers to the confluence of the Hoare Oak Water and the East Lynn River. Watersmeet House was a former fishing lodge, now a tea shop and information centre run by the National Trust. The waters of the southern half of Exmoor flow south to join the River X, passing Exeter into the English Channel. One tributary is the River Bow, famous for its Clapper Bridge, the longest of its kind in Britain. Another, the Hadio, which is fed by the waters of Wimbleball Lake. The Exmoor watershed culminates at Dunkery Beacon, 
which at 1,453 feet is the highest hill on Exmoor. The views are wide-ranging, and on clear days the coast of South Wales across the Bristol Channel is discernible. A moorland road passes near to the summit. In the shelter of Dunkery is Exmoor's show village, Dunster, the area reputedly one of three possible locations that inspired the purple-headed mountain in All Things Bright and Beautiful. Overlooked by the castle battlements, it is a complete, compact, architectural gem, often used by film companies for period dramas. Its iconic feature is the Yarn Market, dating from the late 16th century, but the nunnery around the corner is 15th century. St George's Church is also 15th century, but the castle, although it goes back to the Normans, is largely 19th century. We started at Silworthy and have come full circle around Exmoor. Dunster has a station on the West Somerset Railway, which terminates at Minehead. The line does not enter the National Park, but that doesn't stop me from making an exit with a ride on a steam train.